Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ron and today we are gonna cut something in half and like I mean half So I'm gonna be propagating my Pilea peperomioides and the reason is because she's finally taking off in terms of growth, but it took a long time for her to get to the stage. She did go through a dormant phase for quite a while. So I got her just a little over a year ago and I think half the time she was dormant. Okay, I'll throw a picture on the screen of what she originally looked like and you can probably already tell why I picked her up because she was so cute. Her leaves were actually quite thick and succulent and supple and like very firm and healthy. Um, so I thought it was a healthy plant and it probably was because it was living in a really fantastic greenhouse. But then I brought her home. I didn't really have like this setup back then. I didn't have a humidifier. I didn't have grow lights. I don't even think I had the plant sitting up against the window either. So I was such a plant noob back then. Still kind of am a plant noob. She never really grew until about six months later she started finally pushing out growth eventually i did take it with me to work because i wanted to show her off the lighting conditions there wasn't great either i had her sitting on top of a shelf and in our office we have like this diffused um, skylight system in the ceiling so it kind of diffuses all of the natural sunlight but it's not that bright either because there's a lot of like mechanical stuff up there. I also did not have a grow light with me at work at the time. That's probably why also it never really grew. But as soon as I put her under a grow light at work, that's when she actually started to take off. And you can kind of see her off the frame a little bit. She's right here. Ooh. I transplanted it into this bigger pot because I believe this plant's roots like to grow downwards and then shoot up pups upwards. But she has never put out any pups at all, okay? This plant also went through like a fungus gnat problem. She did go through a couple of repottings. So a couple of times her roots did have to kind of reestablish within the soil. So for a while though, she was sitting in a succulent mix which I think was great but I probably didn't water her as often as I should have and that's why she didn't produce any pups. I then transplanted it into this bigger pot at the time she was maybe like this big and then so I transplanted her with a little bit more moisture retaining soil that's when like she really started to take off. As you can see at first glance, she doesn't look half bad, right? But when you start to look at it closer, like all of these leaves, although they look nice, most of them are very curly and it's as if they never ever seem to like flatten out, right? And I know that's in the beginning when they're new leaves, that's kind of how they start off. But look at this leaf, it's near the bottom and you would kind of expect it to be bigger and firmer, kind of like this one. But even this one's not that great looking either. You can also see how leggy it is. The spacing between leaves are about like half an inch. Whereas in the original picture that I showed you, I'll show it again. The leaf spacing was very compact and that's because it had a lot of sunlight. And everyone's home environment or office environment is different. What you think is bright light might actually be low to medium light but the more light that your pilea gets the closer the leaf spacing will be and that's kind of actually what's happening up here ever since i brought this plant with me back home so from the bottom leggy 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 also not as much watering <laughs> oops and then here we can start to see the leaf spacing becoming more compact and that's what we want because that creates a thicker stem. If you have a pilea and it's not really pushing out healthy leaves, I would suggest you put it into a brighter location and at the same time put it in more moisture retaining soil. 
So, like I said earlier, I'm going to chop it in half. And I probably should have done this a while ago, but I'm going to chop it up like somewhere over here. We'll have a closer look in a few seconds. But these are like really raggedy looking leaves down here. You can see this one's like turning brown. I'm going to cut it around here, transplant this one, propagate it into water, and then hopefully the pups start to form from the bottom half because they call this the friendship plant, right? But I must be very lonely because I don't have any friends in here. And I want more friends. Let's get started. Okay, welcome to the closer look. So here you can see the brown leaf really small leaf it should have been way bigger I probably <laughs> did not fertilize this plant enough neither did I water it enough I want to like give the bottom half a reboot I want it to start over and then I think or I'm hoping that when I do cut it in half that it'll start to push energy from the roots into the stem and then towards new offshoots and then create more pups I really want the top half to really, really take off. It looks like it's in much, much better shape than the rest of the plant. So let's cut her in half. Okay, so here is my pair of shears and I'm gonna quickly disinfect it. Okay, and then let's remove the steak, chopped steak. All right, so here we can see the difference along the stem where it starts to turn from barky, like kind of like the bark on a tree, to the part of the stem where it's a little bit less barky. So right here, bark, 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 and then meow, 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 meow. That's the point where I'm going to want to make the cut. Let's make our incision. I hope this is in frame. I think we're going to cut it right here. Ta-da! Okay, so right there, you can already start to see this cutting is going to make for a really nice plant. We're just going to remove... Oh, see? That leaf came out pretty easily. Remove this one as well. And then this one too. And this one and this one. So this one will be ready to be placed in water. These leaves I could probably try to propagate, but they don't seem to be too healthy because you only want to propagate healthy parts of any plant because that will actually produce the roots that you need because there's already energy in that healthy part of the plant if that makes sense so here we have sad looking mama plant most of these leaves will probably fall off because this one is already turning a bit yellow but without this part attached to the plant it's going to start focusing its energy if not to these leaves then definitely to more growth points on the plant I don't know where it could potentially shoot out from, but hopefully from multiple parts of the plant. All right, here is the cinnamon cam. And right there you can see the incision. So we're just gonna carefully put cinnamon on there if it wants to come out. Just like that, so hopefully the bacteria bad guys don't come. So I'm gonna leave this be and then hope for the best. And I will probably give it two weeks before I start to see any signs of new growth. Okay, so here is a little glass jar. We are going to put this part in. It's kind of wonky. I probably need to remove more leaves, huh? Yeah. Also, another pro tip is when you are trying to root a cutting, such as 
something like this where it has no roots and then a bunch of leaves you can imagine all the energy it takes to sustain the amount of leaves so the less leaves there are on the cutting the more success you will have in the root growth because if you don't remove this many leaves it will root but then the rate of the root growth won't be fast enough to sustain the cutting or to sustain all of these leaves so you might notice some of the leaves start to turn yellow and then fall off i think that looks good so now i'm just gonna add some water before i add water i'm gonna be adding a couple drops of dr q's plant tonic which is similar to your typical super thrive and this is to provide the water with some nutrients for the plant and prevents transplant shock revitalizes stressed plants encourages new growth makes up to 30 gallons i will probably add one drop into here and then the water Let's see how that looks might add a little bit more so there we go Here is the finished product. Well, that is it for the video. It is springtime now, so I hope that these two separate plants will finally take off. Because as we can see, this top half is still healthy. It's pushing out leaves like crazy. And although there were never pups, growing from the soil, from the mother plant. I'm gonna hope for the best because now it doesn't have all of this to provide energy for. It will push out new growth somewhere. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, if you learned a thing or two, please give it a thumbs up and plant scribe. Thank you guys so much for watching me and I really, really appreciate it. You guys have been awesome. Leave a comment because I like interacting with you guys. So yeah. Until then guys, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.